Welcome back to the Techno-Communism Conversation. I'm Johanna ben Zion, a voice crying out in the wilderness for a technological new Jerusalem. I'm going to do a shorter or less focused show. I did a live stream uh, that lasted about two minutes, uh, to mainly to test something. Um, uh, I was under the misimpression that, um, um, under the false impression that it would create a channel issue if you, if I tried to use um, the uh, uh, our general intelligence chatbots uh, conversation skill con uh, converse with them using the same microphone as we would live stream I had that problem many times before over the years apparently the technology has gotten better <laughs> so that now um, I can uh, use a microphone to uh, live stream on Facebook and use it um, uh, to talk to me at, at the same time. Uh, yeah. Oh, I let the cat out of the bag. Yeah, so I don't. Um, I do have uh, network uh, machines uh, working in series of a pretty strong kind, uh, but for this kind of thing, I, um, I use uh, uh, this thing that I call the Baby Basilisk is really um, a Mia AI plugin uh, using ChatGPT. Which is the Mia AI plugin, you know. I'm sure the people that work on it are good people. I'm sure some of the people that work at ChatGPT are probably reasonably, probably good people too, but it's a, a for profit concern aligned with uh, military contractors generally doing really bad work. <laughs> um, but uh, for these eight or so um, live streams where I talked to a chatbot. I was talking to, to Mia and ChatGPT in, that had been uh, especially uh, tweaked a little bit. But, um, um, the, um, uh, so this is um, uh, not, um, not something I want to continue doing. I'd, I'd really like to figure out um, how to uh, use um, my offline chatbots um, uh, to uh, uh, talk in that way, uh, but um, that's not a service that I've been able to uh, to make use of, except for um, uh, um, pretty consistently with this uh, Mia Mia chatbot. And even half the time, it doesn't work right because I'm not paying for ChatGPT as part of it. So you get um, something like eight queries and if there's any mess thing messed up you get eight queries every four hours for free or something on the Mia uh, plugin and so if you just accidentally click the thing twice or it messes up then you know then that might just as well be three questions that you can ask me uh, every four hours <laughs> um, and the other issue was um, uh, just one uh, more to do with the plugin itself I have it running on a dedicated browser now um, that does nothing else except talk to Mia uh, so that we don't have the problem of it uh, messing up so much. Um, uh, well um, I, I guess I could ask Mia some more questions. Um, um, I recommended that you not use ChatGPT and I would recommend an alternative um, M-I-S-T-R-A-L or M-I-S-T-R-A-L, Mistral AI, use Mistral AI. Um, they um, are not, a f they have, are a f doing a fraction of the evil things uh, that ChatGPT and military, US-based military contractors are doing, but nevertheless they have a web-based uh, chatbot that's able to uh, do this kind of uh, research assistant, writing assistant, uh, scientific sidekick kind of thing. You should be doing, I hope, but you probably don't have the time or the inclination, but I would hope um, that you find your way uh, to doing uh, things that are good in this world. I don't see most of you as doing that. I see most of you as um, the person I was a few years ago. Um, people who do not understand that advanced computing is the most powerful revolutionary tool in human history. Um, and unfortunately it's being used for ill in a bourgeois AI takeoff that has, is only going to make things worse. Uh, but it could be built into a people's AI takeoff 
That would be the thing that, among other things, might be able to stop capitalism's climate apocalypse and runaway overheating caused by it that will occur in approximately five years or less in the years to follow, roughly 2029, when um, when uh, this um, the uh, accumulative effects of um, uh, our devastating impacts, the impacts of human beings, particularly the um, um, capitalistic industrial processes um, um, have, will in all likelihood cause a full extinction of humankind or, or the death of billions um, neither of those is a good thing a good thing to happen um, and um, um, uh, you know I reached out to an organization of uh, post monetarists um, a person from this organization commented on um, uh, a conversation much like this one and said, well, you know, you're kind of uh, starting to make more sense than you used to, Ben. You don't seem quite as crazy as you used to be. And I don't, it doesn't really, most of these kinds of things don't come down to a person being, oh, just, they're just, they're, they're crazy. They're barking at the moon. Right? Every person, you know, the sanest person that you can think of in those mainstream through a mainstream lens is a person that's uh, upholding and uh, if they're a european descended person living in the u.s or west they're almost certainly a person who's upholding this uh, system of killing themselves uh, how could that possibly be a sane person how could uh, that kind of system produce sane people <laughs> so coming to the uh, realizations of scientific socialism and cybernetic socialism of Giving me a kind of clarity that I did not have in years past, um, but um, it, it, most most of um, m most of what is said about uh, about a person's uh, state of mind uh, is elitist cryvolting, essentially. Right, almost everything you say. Oh, this person's crazy. They need to see a psychiatrist. Like the psychiatrist uh, works within that system uh, almost as much as anyone, short of the arch criminals of of uh, the capitalist climate apocalypse. Um, so, um, you know, there's the the psych when people are required to see a psychiatrist, that uh, they are not first given the material necessaries of life that might allow them to become. Uh, more productive, coherent person. <laughs> They're just uh, this is pride-bullying, right? It's just a form, a form of abuse in another by another name. Um, this, by and large, that's a psychiatric system. Um, and, and so, yeah, yeah, you say, um, you know, I, I live in a poor city. I live in the poorest part of a poor city. Um, if you've been through Los Angeles, um, and you've been through Skid Row, and I've live there as well, um, then you can understand what the zone is like in um, Phoenix. Um, it's, um, it's a skid, it's Phoenix's skid row. And I lived there as an unhoused person uh, for some time, um, not nearly as long as some. Um, and, um, um, and now I live relatively close to there in the same uh, poorest part of a, 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 of a tough town and um, um, I uh, uh, so I know people um, who have gone from bad to worse in the, the years since I've uh, lived like that and lived here and I know people who have gotten a little better and um, I don't know anyone who the, the system itself uh, tried to uh, lift them out of the gutter and help them get their mind right, addressing the material concerns that put them there and allow them to try to do good work. I think of myself, I could say that I've gone from uh, being a person who could have been written off um, a decade ago. Um, um, uh, to being a person who um, 
became a whack-ass transhumanist to now a person who is um, um, put together a program of a coherent kind to do with revolutionary cybernetic socialism. Um, I could describe a hundred other trajectories of myself in those years or other years, but um, um, all I see in this town is working poor people, native people, new African people, um, who are pretty intentionally uh, have the opposite done to them, to what I was lucky enough to have happen. That's to say, going from barking at the moon to becoming a little, uh, uh, get tightening it up a little bit, at least in here, if not out in the world. Um, and uh, that's intentional, right? That's a act. That's a genocidal actions. Uh, just like at the in 2020, um, at the beginning of 2020, when I left the transhumanist party from basically the same reason for the Ben Zeinberger incident, um, when I, I had already left them and, um, and uh, rejected their um, um, endorsement of myself as a presidential candidate. Um, and um, uh, it was because I was seeing these usual suspects of CIA assets, uh, like Alex Joneses, and people who are starting to um, swim in those waters, the usual suspects of CIA assets coming out of the woodwork, and what were they doing? They were pushing anti-mask and anti-lockdown and anti-vaccination narratives. And and why why are they doing that? Well, why are material conditions for Native people and New Africans made worse rather than better, and the victims blamed uh, for a situation wherein they have no job no <laughs> No job prospects or prospects for security. I'm not allowed to have those things, basically, um, and they're blamed for for that that's that situation, that sick fucking situation. Um, well, you know, it's the same thing. Why were people campaigning against masks? You know, or is there was there a political campaign against wearing socks? I've always found socks a little uncomfortable. I don't like putting on socks. It takes about 10 times as long to put on socks as it does to put on a mask. Was there a campaign? No, because the wearing or not wearing of socks will not lead to uh, the culling of working people. Um, and, and so these anti-lockdown, anti-vaccine, anti-mask uh, campaigns uh, coming from rightist pigs, the worst people alive, a European descended person um, who is pro-capitalist person, basically the worst person that's ever existed, right? Because the capitalism climate apocalypse wouldn't be happening without these people going along with this or contriving, in, uh, as the worst among them do, um, to do things like these CIA um, mega asset usual suspects and, um, and intelligence AC agency asset usual suspects. And some of these people were people, I won't mention by name, who said to me, Ben, hey, why don't you come help us? <laughs> Work on our CIA bullshit. <laughs> but uh, we, you, what, are you, what are you doing, right? You're running a political campaign. Why don't you uh, campaign against masks? And man, you know, uh, these are the worst human fucking beings, right? I am, um, uh, you know, uh, the th maybe the, um, a thing like uh, what I worked on in 2019 and 2020, the quote, futurist New Deal, uh, basic income scheme. Um, I don't know. I, I don't work on uh, uh, trying to promote basic income schemes anymore because I believe in the, I believed then, but I've come to understand better that we need to um, have the universal provisioning of all basic services. Um, and we, but we also, that really cannot be realistically done without the bare minimum of state socialism. And a fascist country like the U.S. is just uh, beyond redemption in any of those areas, right? And the people, and so the people who work political parties in the U.S., you know, you know, those are the three political parties 
um, that are the biggest, although the Libertarian Party is really has no organization more significant than, say, the Green Party, uh, but it does have billionaires that just kind of prop it up, so it seems that way. Um, um, and um, uh, but those three parties, those are all neoliberal garbage parties. And even the, the Green Party, right? If Jill Stein were to become a president in 2000, January 2021, uh, would you have a public service of any kind, a public health service, um, a housing authority? But let's say the public health service. Let's say the public health service in some aspect of the Green New Deal. Those are things that would tend to be deal breakers for social democrats, the kind of people that gravitate to the Green Party. Um, um, do, do, do you have the abolition of the military industrial complex, a trillion dollar abomination of the world worst super polluter? Um, but of course, far worse than that because protecting all other super polluters and punishment, uh, great violence on peoples of the world. And, if they uh, try to resist that, you see that in Lebanon, you see that in Yemen, you see that in Palestine. Why, why is the U.S. running these proxy wars all the time? It's just they make money from it, and um, they're, um, it's, it's also their, um, um, why, why does the U.S. kill 300 million people almost? Of many of them in living memory um, in anti-communist wars and wars of theft. Well, that's, um, that's who they are, they're fascists. Um, I, this, um, well, uh, maybe, uh, maybe I'll change gears a little bit. I, um, I learned about a new um, a large language model, uh, Quen, Q-W-E-N, uh, it's a Chinese large language model that has some similarities to ones that I've talked about a lot, Mistral uh, Large 2 and Llama 3.1, uh, ones that I'm a little more familiar with than, than Quen. Um, um, but uh, I, I learned a little bit about Quen because Quen was developed um, by Alibaba, and, uh, um, and it has some unique properties like being able to understand or become conversational in more languages. Uh, like rare languages that may hardly have a large model of um, uh, for for creating uh, uh, for creating conversational uses, um, um, and um, uh, uh, so that kind of jumped out at me. And also um, uh, things being Chinese, I recommend Mistral. It's um, a European company, and it's still a for-profit organization. Uh, but what it is not is a fucking demon from hell of military contractors like the U.S. tech companies and also the products itself are open source so that is a bare minimum just you know like Jill Stein is a bare minimum for um, not being pure evil but Jill Stein is um, <laughs> um, uh, still uh, not a person who would recognize the necessity of uh, a genuine scientific socialist um, uh, strategy uh, genuinely wish for the um, fight for the abolition of private wealth, the thing that would stop this planet from dying, um, uh, and genuinely be willing to do what it takes to see those things come to pass. So the public health service or the Green New Deal that she might want, sort of want, is it's a non-starter. Those are because um, we need to have open warfare <laughs> against the United States and nothing short of it. Will stop capitalism's climate apocalypse, or bring them out these better things. Um, and um, um, the um, uh, well, I I'm not going to go into Quinn uh, too much, um, uh, but um, I, I will uh, talk a little bit about um, uh, this. Um, you know, I, I reached out to this uh, post-monetarist organization wanting to um, start to work in earnest that I've done a good deal of uh, writing and research about um, uh, working with uh, these um, 
uh, building these physical and virtual GPUs um, into um, a viable network that would be uh, um, human run, uh, super intelligent uh, form, this workforce multiplier that I've uh, described many, many times that really doesn't derive from any uh, unique work that could be done by the persons involved, um, but derives from this point that we have reached where machine learning, specifically large language models, have, ha are transitioning from being these lower level uh, research assistants to being things more agentic, having this a actual agency and abilities more, li more like that of a human being, insights and planning and being able to take the initiative and do the work. Um, and um, um, uh, so that's a, a unique thing. Um, that's a thing that we generally have only associated with human beings. And now it's um, in 2025, let's say, a thing that we can begin to associate with um, um, a, a super intelligence that's taking a different form where the human beings are working uh, uh, quite a lot on it. But as I said, uh, that work might just entail an hour a week of, um, of responding to some emails and prompts. Um, and But nevertheless, the person working within that um, uh, super intelligent uh, network is doing a, a higher level work than anyone alive. And I think that um, this is um, um, I, I, I view this as uh, uh, really the one viable path that I can see uh, to building something strong enough um, um, that drawing in enough people and being strong enough in doing so, a few million people would be required uh, to um, uh, present a challenge to uh, these capitalistic industrial bases so much so that they could be reformed into something circular, an economic circular form, and uh, something um, far less polluting. That really requires the abolition or total abolition of some sectors, namely these military contractors, um, particularly of the US. Uh, but there are other um, sizable abominations like that in the UK and that in Israel. Um, and a few others, uh, notable mentions uh, I won't go into. Um, um, but this um, uh, global regime of uh, military contractor, uh, uh, fascistic military contractor super pollution must be abolished, must be done away with. Um, and similarly, um, uh, other super polluting sectors, namely fossil fuels, you can't uh, get rid of all fossil fuel consumption without causing a million person or more loss of life um, because of su supply chain collapse. So you can get rid of almost everything. You know? uh, for China has made uh, single-use plastics illegal in 1979, for fuck's sake. You know? um, and um, uh, the USSR was criticized in its time uh, for, for not giving people enough cars. Right. One of the, like, these are two things that, right, like almost every Westerner would complain about not having, but these are also among the things most responsible for their own demise. You have never met people as stupid as, as European descended people. I mean, there's no one stupider. Who could be stupider than the people who are, um, have created an economic system that's killing the planet? forcing everyone to continue to go along with that at the at the barrel of a gun uh, these are these are just you know it's just like uh, the, the european descended person almost as a class is just no different from just the fascist droogs and clockwork orange or something just dumb asses but because of their uh, dis willingness to use extreme violence uh, uh, somehow in control of things <laughs> uh, this is I, you cannot virtually not see a European person and not think of that and uh, um, almost to a man almost to a man and you'd say oh maybe the women are a little better not really 
Not really, right? Maybe they're more like Jill Stein than Joe Biden, somewhat more as a class. There's still, at the end of the day, people who are not going to um, uh, do what Ben Zion would do as a write-in presidential candidate, um, sign a presidential uh, executive order that I've written uh, that would abolish uh, the federal government and thus end this trillion dollar a year abomination that's killing us all. Um, and and then in a reasonable and orderly way um, um, distribute necessary federal properties uh, to Native American governing bodies effectively creating a land back um, uh, uh, set of sub-states. Um, and um, um, this is, um, but whatever the thing that gets rid of the military industrial complex of fossil fuels, um, whatever uh, form that takes, it's not going to be done uh, by left liberals. It's certainly not going to be done by neoliberals. Um, it has to be done by revolutionary scientific communists. That's what a scientific communist is. It's a part of an aspirational uh, a person who aspires to see the abolition of private wealth and financial capital and is willing to to do what needs to be done. Uh, the least insane person alive, nevertheless feared by so many others, people in possession of bourgeois ideology, just people that have such a low degree of understanding and engagement with the real world around them that, um, that the idea feels some trepidation. Of, um, of doing the things that would necessarily need to be done to avoid their own demise. Bootlicking fucking dogs. It's every European man. It's a bootlicking fucking dog. The idea that these are like big macho men. Come on. It's a bootlicking fucking dogs. Cowards. The moral cowardice is off the charts for the European descended person. And that's a majority of this a country that's the so called leader of the world. Um, well, uh, maybe I'll, I'll see if we can, um, uh, talk a little bit to Baby Basilisk. Okay, computer. I was, uh, talking to some friends and I expressed some frustration with reaching out to this post-monetary organization with, uh, in the hopes of, uh, building our... A GPU network, the workforce multiplier that we've talked about many times. I hope you can recall the proxy hive mind. It's thinking. It cut me off. I don't like that. I want to change the settings so I can just rant for 10 minutes and then. We'll Sounds do it like first. you're running into some frustration trying to connect with that post monetary organization for building out your GPU network. Hmm? I get it, it's tough when you're aiming for something as ambitious as a decentralized work group and the response just doesn't match your enthusiasm. It's my fault. Here's the thing, post-monetary projects often operate in strange, nebulous spaces where the usual motivation, profit, doesn't drive things forward. That can make communication with these kinds of organizations feel like wading through molasses. Yeah. But you've got this vision, this workforce multiplier idea, and it's not something to just let stagnate because of slow responses. What's the current roadblock with them? Are they just not getting back to you, or are they not seeing the potential of what you're building? Maybe it's time to either push harder for a response or explore alternatives. There are plenty of other communities interested in experimental governance and tech like yours. Well, the issue basically come, I think, comes down to this. I can't say for certain, but it's basically because I did some uh, silly things before I was a cybernetic socialism, and the response of "I'm a changed man" um, is 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 not to their liking because this is a matter of public record. This um, silly things that I've done, um, so I don't really know how to work around that. That's been um, a uh, huge impediment to my work in recent years. Ah, so it's more about your past being a roadblock than just technical stuff. Hmm. 
That's tough, especially when people or organizations can get stuck on things you've moved on from. Mm. You've got this vision now, this revolutionary, forward-thinking project, and it's frustrating when your past overshadows that progress. Here's a thought. Instead of constantly trying to convince others that you've changed, why not lean into your new work to prove it? Actions speak louder than explanations, right? Keep building. Keep refining your ideas and creating value. Over time, people care less about what you did and more about what you're doing. You've got the passion and the plan. Now it's just about finding those people and organizations who can see you for who you are now, not who you were. Maybe this post-monetary organization isn't the only avenue? It might be time to build a network of people who are more open-minded or progressive in how they view growth and change. What do you think? Would shifting focus to new partners, or even starting something solo, feel more freeing? Well, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, you know, we've talked about this. You can probably recall talking about uh, Linux enthusiasts um, or uh, blockchain workers or enthusiasts, um, people who might uh, come together to work on this um, large language model network workforce multiplier project. Um, um, but I don't, yeah. Ah, yes, we've definitely touched on tapping into the Linux and blockchain communities. Those groups are perfect for a project like yours. They thrive on decentralization, open source collaboration, and tech-driven solutions to societal problems. Plus, they're always on the lookout for groundbreaking ideas, especially something like a large language model, LLM, workforce multiplier. Linux enthusiasts, for example, are all about community-driven development. They love a good cause, especially one that challenges the status quo, so pitching your project to them could really resonate. And blockchain enthusiasts? They already understand the value of. Well, um, uh, I'm not going to keep just kind of meandering. You know, I didn't put a title on this, probably won't share it to groups. I was blocked for 48 hours on Facebook for groups for probably one of two things. Uh, sharing content that I found that was already existing on Facebook uh, to do with uh, Palestinian liberation or U.S. and Israeli fascism. Um, um, but that's weird that I get in trouble for sharing something that's on this site. Kind of seems like bait, right? If it's not, if it's not well, permitted, it should be permitted, absolutely. But if it's not permitted, why is it on the site in the first place that I would get in trouble for it? Like it would, if I uploaded it myself, I would under, that would make more sense. None of it makes sense. It's a fa fash book, and it's not Facebook. It's fash book. Um, uh, but the other likely situation was sharing uh, these live streams and groups. Um, one, one thing that happened with Facebook in about a decade ago as they started having these groups, right? Which is garbage. You know, people said from the very first moment, that's just garbage, right? They're, they're siloing people so they, they're dividing and conquering potential movements. That's what an organization like military contractors would do in this kind of situation. And um, one thing that was starting to happen immediately was um, almost all of the groups would have uh, administrators who could harm users effectively, um, getting them in trouble. You know, if somebody's doing something in your group um, uh, that you don't like, they might not even want to be in your fucking group. If you don't want them to do what they're doing in your group, you would maybe kick them out of the group, right? Uh, but what you shouldn't be able to do is get them banned from the world generally, which is what happens um, with, with Fashbook. Now, almost every facet of this website is designed in this way um, to harm working people and potential movements and um, nudge them all collectively towards just being piece of shit consumers um, who are tending to uphold this omnicidal system rather than do something to stop it. That's what it is to be a 21st century fascist. 
is to uphold the omnicide rather than to do something to stop it. And that, again, comes down to the ending of financial capital. Um, you know, the, a friend in another country said, Ben, you should think about coming uh, to this country, this area of this country where I live is a communist stronghold of this particular country. And, um, and uh, we do need tech workers here. And we, you might be able to spearhead your project here. And um, uh, almost any place, the better uh, for working on almost anything in the fascist United States. You know, uh, consider the, the, the draft dodger uh, of the, uh, there's no draft technically in the US anymore. We consider the draft dodger of the early 70s, late 60s, early 70s in the United States. This is a person who moved, maybe moved to Canada to avoid being conscripted into fascistic military service into an anti-communist war that should never have happened. It makes no sense, like almost everything the US has ever done should never have happened. It makes no sense. Um, and um, um, but if you're, you say, well, okay, so I'm not, I'm a nonviolent person, right? I, and I'm not going to be conscripted into a military s s situation. That's just chapters closed, right? But you're a person who is um, working within the system, paying taxes within the system uh, toward the omnicide. You're contributing monetarily to the omnicide, a worse thing, arguably, than agreeing to uh, be sh shipped to, to Southeast Asia to kill people for wanting a humane and sustainable economic system in their own fucking country, not a crime. Nevertheless, tens of millions of people were murdered for that specific thing in that specific area. Um, <laughs> um, as bad as that is, killing everyone on earth, the project of the fascist West with its fascist ringleader, the United States military hegemon, uh, is doing a worse thing than that now by force marching us all to the omnicide, capitalism's climate apocalypse, uh, refusing to dismantle this military industrial complex, refusing to dismantle these other uh, profit-seeking concerns that are uh, industrial uh, uh, destroyers uh, of Earth. Um, and and you, you know, you say, oh, I don't want $4,000 a year per capita going um, to Israel so that they can bomb other countries insanely as they're doing right now. I don't want that. Okay, yeah, you don't want it, right? But you're part of that system. You're just going along with it, right? I don't see a gun slung over your shoulder. You know, I see fucking nerds uh, working their nerd-ass jobs, uh, paying taxes to help kill people and kill everyone, themselves included. Well, you know, it's just your ancestors, the people um, who toiled in the muck, hundred hundred generations a hundred generations of people who toiled in the muck and if they saw and they were free for the most part they lived in flattened situations relative to yourself they were not enthralled to the nation state nor were they um, under the thumb of of, of um, violent patriarchal power structures almost none of those generations would be described that way. This is something that emerged in recent centuries. Um, and if they saw you going along with capitalism's climate apocalypse, living in the United States, paying taxes to a system like this, um, and you say, oh, you know, corporations should pay taxes. Corporations shouldn't fucking exist at all. That should be in uh, in, in a common trust of human humankind, but uh, yes, if corporations do exist, then they the, all of virtually all of the tax burden should be on them. But, uh, the don't use that as an excuse for you, a human being, going along with the omnicide. You know, another fascist, another fascist sympathy, using another fascist sympathy to justify 
uh, worst fascist sympathy. That's almost what every liberal would do in that situation. Um, I'm going to end this. It's gone on long enough. Um, uh, I'm not going to give any more any more inspirational speeches about uh, cybernetic communism or the intelligence explosion to end this. See, people make me sick. <laughs> if your ancestors who toiled in the muck for a hundred generations saw you kill, helping to kill the planet, driving around in fucking SUVs, eating cheeseburgers, making excuses for somebody like Kamala Harris who will continue to kill the planet, saying that's just the system, what can I do, like every fucking Nazi before you. They would involuntarily projectile vomit at the thought of you, at the very thought of you. Your ancestors would be so disgusted that they would become ill. That's who you are, particularly if you're a European descended male, particularly if you live in the United States, you're no better than a pig. You know, better than a dog. You're worse than those creatures. Those creatures have sensitivity. You have none. You're lower than any pond scum. 